it's me. Welcome to day one of Inktober, which I just found out after announcing my participation that there's actually a huge controversy surrounding the Inktober trend. So somebody recommended that I do a deep dive into the situation and make a whole video about it, which I decided would be perfect for my first of my 31 Inktober drawing videos. I will go through everything that happened and discuss why I will still be participating alongside posting my normal weekly paint and sip content. So if you're just here for the tea, as they say, I'll still be talking about YouTube drama along with other non-art related gossip content and spooky content during my Inktober videos. So I still welcome you all with open arms to hang out here, even if you're not an artist, as I always do for all of my videos. And make sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. It helps me out tremendously as well as it should help you out to stay on track with your daily doodles. So I really hope you're participating with me whether that be traditional Inktober or Arttober or following a new set of prompts set by your favorite creator or just making something else for fun. With that, grab your sketchbooks, a snack, a beverage, and let's make some art and talk about some interesting stuff. Today's prompt is crystal. So I decided to do a digital illustration of a crystal ball. Here are the prompts for the rest of the month, which will always be written out in the description for easy access as well. I am expecting to see your drawings or other artworks, even if it's just a quick little doodle done during this video, but I just actually made my own subreddit r slash paint and sip yt where i'd love to see your artwork shared with me and that's where i will be the most active during october when it comes to interacting with your artwork but also feel free to share it with me on instagram or twitter at paint and sip yt and i will also be posting my illustrations daily on my patreon as downloadable coloring pages so if you don't want to draw your own prompts but would like to color or paint in my line drawings maybe they are available on my Patreon for $1 a month. Now let's talk about the controversy surrounding Inktober and why many artists have decided to opt out of the trend for the last few years. Just as some background, Inktober was established in 2009 by an artist named Jake Parker with the idea that practicing inking every day for a month would help artists improve their skill and technique while also just acting as a fun trend and a challenge to get artists drawing more. Each year, the official Inktober website releases a set of 31 prompts, a way to challenge artists to work more creatively by coming up with new and unique ideas to illustrate a certain word. Some words seem easier and straight up, like this year, for example, moon and crystal and raven can be pretty self-explanatory, but other prompts like fan, pressure, and crispy are more ambiguous, leading to more of a variety of subject matter from artists interpreting the prompt in their own ways. Inktober became extremely popular in the art community until controversy surrounded the founder, Jake Parker, and made some artists afraid to even touch the trend or the hashtag. The first hiccup that came regarding Inktober involved the question asking whether or not digital art, specifically digital inking, was permitted to contribute to the trend. In 2017, Parker answered this question on Twitter from the official Inktober account saying, no one is going to stop you from doing Inktober on your iPad, but just know you're missing out on the full experience of Inktober. So technically, yes, digital inking is allowed, but Parker seemed to begrudgingly let digital artists be included in the challenge. Now in 2021, the official Inktober Frequently Asked Questions page outlines its rules regarding digital participation by answering the question, can I work digitally? The answer says yes. Initially, the challenge of Inktober was focused on traditional inking. Although learning how to ink digitally is a skill separate from traditional inking, it is no less valid. If you want to improve your digital inking skills, then doing Inktober digitally is a great way to challenge yourself. Just be cool to those who want to use traditional inks. And traditional inkers 
be cool to those who are trying to improve with their digital inking. Today, the creator of Inktober seems to be welcoming all types of art and has even accepted digital art related sponsorships for Inktober, but it also seems like some artists question whether or not Parker holds some negative opinions about digital art in general based on his initial response to allowing digital inking to count toward the Inktober trend. The real controversy came in 2019 when Parker trademarked Inktober, resulting in the protection of the word Inktober when used as a title for for-profit projects and protection of the official Inktober logo. When I was first made aware of this, I didn't really see what the big deal was because I believe artists should always protect their intellectual property. And I thought it would be fair that as the creator of Inktober, Parker should be able to reserve the rights to trademark the word and the logo when it comes to artists profiting from it. Again, this trademark only extends to the use of the word for titles of work. For example, if I decided to publish a book full of my Inktober illustrations and if I used the word Inktober in the title of my book, that would infringe on Parker's trademark. That doesn't mean, however, that Parker reserves the right to my actual drawings, whether or not they were inspired by the official Inktober prompts or not. Your art is still your art and you will always own copyright of your original art. This means that any artist may absolutely still participate in Inktober and even sell and distribute their Inktober drawings. The only rule is that they follow trademark laws. According to the official Inktober website, the only rule you must follow is you must not sell work that has the name Inktober in the title or uses the official Inktober logo, but you may use Inktober in conjunction with the year for a subtitle, caption, or explanation of your work. For example, you can say, this was inspired by Inktober 2021 prompts without infringing on the trademark. So that means that nobody needs to worry about cease and desists as long as you follow these guidelines. So if you're hesitant on participating in fear of receiving a takedown notice or a cease and desist, there's no reason to worry as long as you're not selling the Inktober name or logo. So good news, we can keep creating. There's a ton of misconceptions related to copyright versus trademark and what the trademarked Inktober means for artists, which I will get into shortly, but first I will continue summarizing what happened when Parker trademarked Inktober and why it was actually problematic. Like I just said, at first I saw no issue with the trademark, but after some investigating, the issue is a lot deeper than what I first thought. So why is the trademark an issue? The main issue that that arose was some artists in fact did receive cease and desists from Parker's lawyer and from Amazon. These artists who were affected were selling products online that profited from the Inktober name and or logo which infringed on Parker's trademark. But the issue was that these products were created and published before the trademark took effect. And these artists were not given any prior notice that a trademark was even in the process of being made. In the cease and desist letters, the wording also insinuated that these artists must compensate Parker for the revenue made on these products. Thankfully though, Parker issued an explanation stating that there was some miscommunication between himself, his lawyer, and Amazon, and Parker did not want any compensation from the artists who were affected, and only asked to resolve the issue privately with each artist who was affected by the trademark notice. Parker later went on to announce the release of his own book that uses the Inktober title and logo, which is likely one of the main reasons why Parker issued the trademark in the first place, in order to protect his work and have it be distinguishable from other artists and other Inktober related products. But more scandal comes with this book, which I will also be discussing shortly. In general, there is nothing wrong with an artist trademarking their ideas and their logos, which is what Parker did, but some people don't think it was fair that Parker trademarked an idea that was originally made to be open to the public like Inktober is and was. Since the trend found a success from the contributions of many artists over the course of years, some think that it was really shady for Parker to trademark it, and others think that he was well within his right, and even even though issues stemmed from it, he never trademarked Inktober in bad faith according to some. But what do you think? 
While doing research for this video, I came across some comments from people as recently as this year who are still confused about trademark versus copyright and what the trademark means for us as small artists participating in Inktober. I wanted to put some of those misconceptions to rest to ease anybody who still may be hesitant to participate because of legal reasons. Copyright and trademarks are two different things. Copyright is a right that an artist automatically has for any original piece of art that they create, including traditional art, digital art, 3D art, and photography. For example, if I take a photo of my cat, I own the copyright to that photo. And if I make a painting of my cat based on that photo, I own both the photo and the image of my painting. But if you made a painting of my cat based on my photo, I would own the copyright to the image of your painting. But that's not a trademark. Trademarks are not automatically given to art or intellectual property like copyright is for art. Owners need to apply for a trademark and go through a really long process to own the trademark. And the owner of the trademark needs to actively enforce the trademark or else they can lose it. This may be an explanation for why Parker took down projects of small artists selling the Inktober name. If he decided to kind of pick and choose and let some things go, he may possibly have lost his trademark. Now, as I said, some people are still confused about what they are and are not allowed to do when it comes to participating in Inktober. I saw a couple of YouTube comments that spread misinformation around. For example, somebody said, I think it's ridiculous that artists can't sell their Inktober art. It's just a prompt. They're not stealing anyone's work. Inktober doesn't own the words on the prompt list. And someone responded saying, ah, yes, stealing words. <laughs> and this is untrue. You're absolutely allowed to sell your art using the words from the prompts. You're just not allowed to title your piece with the word Inktober. For my crystal drawing here, I can title it Crystal by me, Sienna Lane. And then I can either elaborate in a caption or a subtitle that is based from Inktober 2021, or I don't have to either, just as long as I don't use Inktober in the title and sell it as such. So again, don't worry about the trademark thing as long as you're not selling the Inktober name or logo. Now let's talk about Parker's ongoing plagiarism scandal, which is another reason why some artists are turned off by using the official Inktober prompts and are opting to do another October art challenge instead. Parker was supposed to release a drawing instruction book last year in October 2020 called Inktober All Year Long, but the release was cancelled once artist Alfonso Dunn noticed shocking similarities between Parker's book and his own. Before the release of Inktober All Year Long, Parker shared some sneak peeks of his book online, which Dunn studied closely alongside his own art instruction book that was published earlier on. Dunn then posted an hour-long YouTube video pointing out each detail that supported the claim that Parker copied Dunn's book which I highly recommend watching that video in full and it will be linked down below. In his video, Dunn points out pages in Parker's book that have similar illustrations, titles, and layouts to Dunn's book. Even stronger evidence of plagiarism comes from Dunn explaining how much time and work went into finding the right words to use and the right way to explain what he wanted to present. For example, Dunn explains how in his book, he broke down his drawings into five ideas or components, but it took a lot of revision for him to land on that number five. He said he started at eight different components and spent a lot of time revising and condensing that number eight down to five. Parker uses the same five drawing components, only wording them a little bit differently as to not be as obvious, according to Dunn. For those thinking, what's the likelihood that Parker even heard of Dunn's book, let alone read it or copied it? But the proof was presented in Dunn's video with a screenshot of Parker giving a shout out to Dunn on Instagram, posting a page of Dunn's book and recommending Dunn's book to his audience on the official Inktober Instagram page. Parker responded to all of this, saying that he wishes Dunn would have reached out privately regarding this matter and asks his audience to be open to both sides before making any conclusions, taking the stance that he did not plagiarize Dunn's book. 
It seems like this plagiarism investigation is still ongoing a year later, but some websites I visited have posted an expected October 2021 publication for Parker's book, but I don't know how accurate that is. Since the full book, Inktober All Year Long, has never been released, it's hard for us to definitely say whether or not Parker plagiarized Dunn's book but Dunn's video does make a pretty good case for it. Other people, however, refuse to form an opinion on a book that was never even released that we haven't even seen in full, and they don't want to rely on only an edited video to form their opinion. So what are your thoughts on that? Today, Inktober 2021 is in full swing and people are definitely still participating, although many artists are turned away by Inktober's founder, Parker's scandals, since they do not want to support Parker in any way. And here's my take. If you want to participate in Inktober, go for it. Inktober as the trend is not trademarked or owned by Parker. It is owned by the public. Only the name and the logo are owned by Parker, so you can still follow the prompts and post your art without supporting Parker. You may also take a different route and follow the prompts of someone else or make your own prompts. You can call it Arttober, Spooktober, or anything you want as long as you're making art and enjoying yourself. I will still be participating in Inktober and I still invite you all to draw with me whether you follow the same prompts as me or not. Again, I'd love to have you join my subreddit r slash paint and sip yt to share your October artwork with me and any form of art from there on out. With that, thanks for watching and I hate outros so okay bye.